Throughout history, there have been moments when individuals dared to defy orders, altering the course of events in unexpected ways. From small acts of rebellion to monumental decisions, these instances of disobedience have reshaped history's narrative, highlighting the power of defiance and the impact it can have on the world. Let's delve into 11 compelling instances where people chose to disregard orders and, in doing so, change the very fabric of history. 1. David Tyke sent for tanks to help another unit, defying orders to withdraw. On April 22, 1951, the Chinese army launched the Spring Offensive against American forces. During the Korean War, sending 300,000 troops to attack American lines. Two days later, as American forces were being overwhelmed, a unit from the 8th Ranger Company was caught behind the advance. Its commander, E.C. Rivera, radioed for help, but the remaining American forces decided to retreat. Rivera and his 65 men would have been doomed if not for Lieutenant Dave Tyke. Disobeying his captain, Tyke sent for tanks to Rivera's position on Hill 628 and retrieved the stranded rangers. 2. Soviet sub-officer Vasily Arkhipov kept the Cuban Missile Crisis from escalating. During 13 days in October 1962 known as the Cuban Missile Crisis, the United States and the Soviet Union barely avoided a nuclear war that would have devastated the planet. But even though negotiations between President John F. Kennedy and Premier Nikita Khrushchev were ultimately successful, the war still almost happened because of a confused Soviet submarine captain. Along with three others, the Soviet submarine B-59 was stationed in the Caribbean. It was equipped with a nuclear missile with nearly the same destructive power as the bomb dropped. On Hiroshima, the submarine, the submarine fleet, fleet had orders, orders to, attack to attack American, American forces, forces if provoked, if provoked without, without needing, needing approval, approval from, from Moscow. Moscow. When the American Navy discovered the submarines and began dropping depth charges nearby, the commander of B-59, Valentin Savitsky, thought that the war had begun and ordered the missile to launch. However, the fleet's commander, Vasily Alexandrovich Arkhipov was also on board. Arkhipov felt that the Americans were only trying to get the submarine to surface and that it wasn't in danger. Arkhipov talked Savitsky down and averted nuclear war. 3. Desmond Doss refused to carry a weapon but became a hero in combat. Technically, Desmond Doss didn't break any rules when he registered as a conscientious objector for the U.S. military during World War II. He was one of more than 72,000 individuals who joined the service as conscientious objectors. When the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, Doss was given the option for a draft deferment. When the Americans chose to join the submarines and because began he wanted dropping to serve depth the country, charges nearby, because the commander he refused of B-59, to take a life on religious Valentin grounds, he became a combat that medic the war for the 77th had begun and infantry ordered the missile and refused to, launch. to carry a gun. However, this the and his exemption from training on the Saturdays were the sources Arkhipov of intense criticism was also on board. Das from his Arkhipov fellow soldiers felt that the Americans However, were only trying to when get the submarine to combat, and that the respect was in danger. Arkhipov he brought Stavitsky down his and averted among nuclear war, but he's best known for saving the lives of about 75 wounded soldiers under heavy gunfire at the Battle of Okinawa. Das received the Medal of Honor for this, becoming the first and only conscientious objector in World War II to receive the honor. 4. Aussie diver Derek said Bugger the CO and captured a Japanese position. The 2 of 48th Battalion of the Australian 9th Infantry Division was Australia's most decorated unit that served in World War II. And Lt. Thomas Diver Derrick was one of the battalion's most decorated and beloved soldiers. Derrick's best known accomplishment came during the Battle of Saddleburg in New Guinea in November 1943. The 2 48th participated in the fight. But after a week of fighting their progress stalled and Derek's commanding officer ordered a retreat. Derek was quoted as saying, Bugger the CO, just give me 20 minutes and we'll have this place. Derek advanced on multiple Japanese machine gun positions, uphill through the jungle, while under covering fire from his squad mates. And he did it by himself. Altogether, Derek cleared out 10 enemy positions, helping his unit accomplished their objective and receiving the Victoria Cross for his efforts. Unfortunately, 
Derek perished late in the war, suffering grievous injuries at the Battle of Tarakan in May 1945, and succumbing the next day. 5. Stanislav Petrov chose to disregard a missile warning, averting World War III. More than two decades after submarine officer Vasily Arkhipov avoided nuclear war during the Cuban Missile Crisis, another Soviet officer, Lt. Col. Stanislav Petrov, again made the decision not to launch an attack that could have triggered a nuclear exchange. On September 26, 1983, Petrov was stationed at the Serpikov 15 bunker near Moscow, part of the Soviet Air Defense Forces. That day, the early warning system detected what appeared to be an incoming American intercontinental ballistic missile. Petrov and his staff ultimately decided that it was a false alarm, and a later investigation bore this out. The system was triggered by the sun reflecting off clouds. By refusing to launch an attack, Petrov potentially averted hundreds of millions, if not billions, of deaths. In 2004, in recognition of his achievement, Petrov was given the World Citizen Award by the San Francisco Base Association of World Citizens, along with a $1,000 prize. I didn't believe I had done something extraordinary. I was simply doing my job and I did it well, Petrov commented at the time. In 2013, he received the Dresden Peace Prize as the man who saved the world. 6. World War I artillery commander Raoul Barub refused a general's order to fire on his own men. World War I was responsible for many technological innovations, and one of the most important was the widespread use of the machine gun. With their superior rate of fire, machine guns allowed armies to target large numbers of enemy soldiers from a distance. Machine guns in concert with improvements in artillery required armies to change tactics moving away from mass bayonet charges and towards trench warfare. But this change was gradual. In the early stages of the conflict, commanders routinely ordered charges against machine guns. On March 7, 1915, the French 336th Infantry Regiment was ordered to attack entrenched German machine gun positions. The attacks went on for two days, and when the divisional commander, General Gerard Ravelhack, ordered another charge, the 21st Company refused. Furious, Ravelhack ordered his artillery commander, Colonel Barub, to fire on his own troops. Barub also refused, days later, when four corporals were unable to cross 150 yards of no man's land. To cut barbed wire and turn back, Ravelhack ordered them to be executed. The incident was later fictionalized in the Stanley Kubrick film Paths of Glory. Ravelhack remained in command of the regiment until February 1916, when he was ordered to take a three-month leave of absence. After the fighting ended, he received the Grand Officer of the Legion of Honor and retired with honors. 7. When Augustus died, Roman soldiers on the Rhine mutinied, causing an imperial crisis. All forms of mutiny are acts of disobeying orders, but the Rhine mutiny of 14 CE is one of the most well-remembered because it threatened the stability of the entire Roman Empire. At the end of the reign of Emperor Augustus, who ruled from 27 BCE to 14 CE, the Roman military had devoted much of its power to suppressing a revolt in Illyricum, the northwestern Balkans in 609 CE. This redeployment helped to precipitate the notorious destruction of three vulnerable legions at Teutoburg Forest in Germany. To replenish its losses, the Roman military recalled veterans and drafted freed slaves. By 14 CE, the Pannonian legions were populated by soldiers who were either conscripted, past the term of their original service, or weren't ordinarily soldiers in the first place. Bottom line, most didn't want to be there and felt their rights were ignored. But, as dissatisfied as the soldiers were, they were also at least loyal to Augustus who had drafted them and who exerted a near superhuman authority over the empire he had helped to forge. When Augustus died, legions stationed near the Rhine River mutinied. The revolt started with the legions via Laude and 21 Ray Packs, where soldiers began murdering their company commanders, and quickly spread to legions I Germanica and 20 Valeria Victrix. The job of stopping the Rhine mutiny fell to Germanicus son of the new emperor Tiberius's brother Drusus, 
and a popular former commander, Germanicus temporarily placated the mutinous soldiers by agreeing to release everyone who had participated in 20 or more campaigns immediately, then paying off their salaries. When Tiberius sent a Senate delegation to investigate the mutiny, the legions revolted again. This time, the soldiers threatened Germanicus's pregnant wife Agrippina, a granddaughter of Augustus, and their toddler son, Gaius known to history by his childhood nickname Caligula. Germanicus responded by shaming them for endangering the lives of Augustus's descendants. The mutineers' resolve broke, and their ringleaders were executed. Then, Germanicus led the formerly rebellious soldiers on a successful expedition across the Rhine, which proved their loyalty again. 8. Indian soldiers refused to use cartridges greased with pork and beef fat, triggering the 1857 rebellion. By 1857, the British East India Company had controlled India with a repressive regime for about a century. In January of that year, tensions had finally reached the point that Indian political leaders were planning a revolutment. But the Indian mutiny didn't officially begin until spring of that year. The event that sparked the mutiny originated with 90 Sepoys Indian infantrymen, serving under the British 3rd Bengal Light Cavalry Regiment. At this time, British Enfield rifles used cartridges that were reportedly greased with a mixture of cow and pig fat to load their rifles. Soldiers were required to tear the paper wrapping off the cartridges with their teeth. The Sepoys, a mixture of Hindu and Muslim troops, objected to putting the rumored cow and pig grease in their mouths for religious reasons and refused to use the cartridges. On May 8, the troops were found guilty of insubordination in a court-martial and the Indian Mutiny began two days later. The British ultimately defeated the Indian Mutiny, followed by vicious reprisals whose extent is still debated, and took direct control of India, establishing the British Raj that would last until 1947. 9. Union General Dan Sickles moved 10,000 men out of position. While commanders have disobeyed orders for practical reasons, with General Daniel Sickles at the Battle of Gettysburg, his reasons are more debatable. Sickles was a Tammany Hall politician with ambitions of becoming president. These were effectively ruined when he murdered his wife Slever. When the American Civil War broke out in 1861, Sickles raised a brigade with himself as its commander, hoping to improve his reputation. On July 2nd, Sickles' Third Corps was ordered to defend a portion of Cemetery Ridge that included Little Round, Top, it was a central position between two other divisions. Feeling that the lay of the land made his position indefensible, Sickles asked Major General George S. Meade for permission to advance three-quarters of a mile to the Emmitsburg Road. Meade refused. Sickles ended up advancing to the forward position anyway, which left his unit vulnerable to flanking attacks and also left Little Round Top undefended. In the ensuing Confederate attack, Sickles was forced to retreat and lost almost 40% of his force. Defending Little Round Top fell to the 3rd Brigade, 1st Division, V Corps. Among its regiments was the famous 20th Maine, under Colonel Joshua Chamberlain. They famously managed to repel the Confederate advance, but the heroics likely wouldn't have been necessary if not for Sickles' decision. Sickles maintained to the end of his days that his insubordination helped the Army of the Potomac survive the day's assaults. Many historians disagree, but some people still feel he may have had a point. Thanks for joining us on this exploration of history's rebellious moments, where individuals changed the world by disregarding orders. From courageous acts of defiance to unforeseen revolutions, these moments remind us of the power individuals possess to shape the future. If you found these stories intriguing, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more captivating glimpses into history's untold tales. Share your thoughts and any stories you'd like us to cover in the comments below. Remember, sometimes challenging the status quo can lead to groundbreaking change. Keep questioning, keep exploring, and who knows, you might just be the next person to rewrite history. Until next time, stay curious and keep rewriting the rules. Thank you.